dive right into it. Okay. So let's go over all the different debt tools if you're brand new. This is a this is a refresher for all of my loyal subscribers and clients, but it's always good just to hear it again consistently when you're mapping out your strategy. Even if you have a debt tool already, you might be in a position where you've been doing velocity banking for say a, a, a year or a year and a half or two, and we should be upgrading the line of credit. You know, maybe you've been rocking with a personal line of credit at nine to 11, 12%. I was just dealing with a client recently. They're at a personal line of credit for 12.75%. And I think this was with PNC Bank. So they have a personal line of credit and they have a ton of equity in their home. So I'm like, it's time to upgrade, right? It's time to get a second lien or a first lien HELOC and dramatically reduce your borrowing costs from 12.75 down to between three and a half and five and a half percent, right? So this will apply. This, this information here will apply to those who already are doing velocity banking and you're always looking to improve your strategy overall. So review on the debt tools, we've got credit cards, right? This applies to personal and business, okay? We can find really unique credit cards that literally operate just like a personal line of credit, meaning we're able to withdraw credit from the credit card limit into cash without paying any cash advance fee or balance transfer fee. You will typically find this at smaller banks, credit unions, typically. Most other credit cards that we do velocity banking with have to come with a 0% intro rate, 12 months, 21 months, right? 18 months, 0% on purchases for that same amount of time with a balance transfer fee, preferably under 3%, right? There are quite a few balance transfer cards out there that are in the neighborhood of 5%, 4%. You know, that's pretty high. Um, in some cases, it might make sense if there's nothing else that we qualify for, if there's nothing else that we can use for the time being. But still, when you're looking for credit cards, we want to shop around, right? We want to find the best card catered to our strategy. So we got those credit cards. We've got personal, unsecured, revolving lines of credit, PLOC for short, or BLOC business line of credit. This is the next stage up from a credit card, right? Where you don't, where you, these rates are always lower than credit card rates for the most part, right? So it's one debt tool better than the first, right? The first debt tool that most people have or will get when they first come across Velocity Banking typically is a credit card, right? Most of us already have one in our system and it can be added to a PLOC or a HELOC, right? It works perfectly together, right? So having a credit card is definitely, I would argue, essential in velocity banking. Don't You don't absolutely need it, but it's phenomenal in terms of offsetting the borrowing costs on your main debt tool, right? So that's key. So PLOC, BLOC, then you've got HELOCs. That's the next stage up is a home equity line of credit, either in the first or second position. And just a refresher, if you don't know what a first lien HELOC is or a second, a first lien HELOC literally replaces your first lien mortgage. Your traditional amortized 30-year, 15-year mortgage gets replaced with a first lien HELOC. So if you owed $250,000 on your property in a 30-year mortgage and the property value was $400,000, we could get, say, a $320,000, $350,000 or so home equity line of credit in the first position where day one you would owe that 250 in the line. So now your debt tool is what you're doing velocity banking on because you moved one debt into your new debt tool, that first lien HELOC. And these rates are typically always lower than credit cards and PLOCs and BLOCs, right? So that's one step up. A second lien HELOC is in the second position. You'd, you would have your first position mortgage, then you'd have this second lien which is a home equity line of credit for typically a smaller amount, right? They look at the equity in your property and you get maybe 70, 80% of the uh, LTV. So maybe I've seen as high as 100 plus thousand, 150 plus thousand in the, in the second position is what I've seen. And I've seen rates as low as 1.99%. I think I've seen something at 0.99% once, right? So they can be extremely low for a temporary period of time. With HELOCs, you have 
fixed rate options and variable rate options. Typically when doing velocity banking, I do, most people tend to go with the variable rate option simply because a lot of the times they come with like an intro rate offer, right? Like I was saying, like 1.99, 2.99, 3.5, something really low in comparison to all your other debts that you're paying on. And they'll lock in that rate for say six months or one year, sometimes even as long as two years. And then it'll jump to the variable rate at that point. Well, in that first year of velocity banking or year and a half, two years, we can cause so much damage in your debt that by the time the rate changes to a uh, higher rate, when it jumps to the prime plus whatever rate it is, say it went from two and a half percent, it jumps all the way back up to five and a half. That's not going to affect us in any way because how we're doing velocity banking, we, we're going to consistently continue to pay less than we're always paying less than whatever the rate is on our debt tool so if i have a a heloc at five and a half percent in reality i'm only paying less than two percent so if i started out with a two and a half percent heloc or three percent i'm probably paying like one less than one one and a half right and it'll stay that way regardless of the rate going up so it doesn't affect us so when the rate goes to five and a half we're still paying 